mixing and mastering for vinyl compared to mixing and mastering for digital delivery do they differ at all seeming as you do you obviously have a a vinyl uh side as well that you work with Mm -hmm. yeah um so for you know first of all i think it's really really awesome that vinyl has made such a huge comeback um obviously artists and um and man listeners anybody holding a physical piece of music in their hands not only benefits the artists and the bottom line of the project it also gives the artists and the listeners a way of expressing and, and listening um and and seeing and holding and what you know looking at visual rep- representation of of that art um vinyl is a really really hard thing to get right um i know because i've spent a lot of years in it and i've spent a lot of years trying to open a vinyl record pressing plant and um there is so much that goes into making a vinyl record that has to go correctly um in order for it to even show up as sound on the on the disc um and so in or the first step is recording and mixing in such a way that will sound good eventually on vinyl and you're totally right to ask that question there are things that you should be doing in your mix um, if you're if you think that your record is going to be destined for vinyl um, number one make sure that any top end stuff that you've got going like really splashy symbols um, any samples that you have that have like a hard start and a hard stop that you're not having things like um, a lot of like clicky sounds, glitchy sounds that are not made by an analog instrument. Computers can make those sounds and make them happen really, really fast. Of a, a lathe on a turntable is not as adaptable as a computer is. And so things like super, super low sub bass or things that are out of phase in the low end um, are problems, but really more problems turn out to be things that have a lot of really crazy top end stuff happening. We have to band pass that, or we have to use very heavy high frequency limiters um, to be able to just control that enough so that the cutting stylus can, can actually do its job without getting, you know, getting the, you know, having the heads, the heads get too hot or having um, the, you know, having the, um, the actual waveform not get cut, get cut properly. Um, So when you're mixing, look at your, watch your level, try and make sure that there is some dynamics available and program dynamics and dynamic range. Make sure that you don't have too much crazy top end going on. Listen to your mastering engineer. uh, If you ask them what you think, what they think it should need and listen to them and do that, please. Um, But yeah, the, the normal things are like, make sure that there's not too much crazy sub bass. Try to make sure that the bass is as mono compatible as possible. If it's not, it's okay. We have tools to do that, to make sure we have elliptical filters and things to make sure that it's going to sound as good as, as it can. Um, but bigger problems end up being high frequency issues and overall level issues. Um, and when you're going to get ready to sequence a vinyl record, keep in mind that things that are on the end of the sides tend to be a little bit harder to cut loud and bright. Um, they end up feeling a little bit, a little bit off if you treated them the whole, the same way all the way across. That's why a lot of ballads used to be put on the ends of records on the ends of the sides. Um, huh. back, you know, yeah, back then. I didn't know that. That's so cool. So yeah, the sequence really matters. <laughs> <laughs> 